Hi, and welcome to lesson three here in our electrons unit. For the next couple of lessons, we're going to talk about electron configurations and how we represent the configuration of electrons in particular atoms. We're going to look at a couple of different ways to do this. The first configuration that we're going to look at is called the basic configuration. And so for each of these, I'm going to start with carbon, and I'll give you the configuration for carbon for each of these as the example that we'll use to talk. So let's go in and talk about basic electron configurations. Really important, you might be wondering, why do we care about electrons? But you need to remember that an atom's electrons tell you how the atom behaves physically and chemically. It tells you a lot about the properties of the atom, and it also tells you about how that atom is going to bond, which is going to be a big deal moving forward in this course. When we consider the electrons in an atom, we can group them up into two major lumps. The first is the valence. These would be the electrons in the outermost energy level of the atom. So in this Bohr diagram, think about the valence as the outermost ring around the atom. Of course, we know that's not really where the valence electrons are. They're actually in the outermost orbitals, right? The outermost three-dimensional region where, where they're most probably found. But we can totally use the model of a Bohr diagram to get at this point. The valence is going to be the electrons in the outermost energy level of the atom. And then any other electrons in all of the other energy levels, in carbon's case, there's only one other energy level. Those will all be part of what's called the kernel, all of the electrons inside of the valence. Between the valence and the kernel, we have all of the atom's electrons. When we put electrons around an atom, they can only go into specific places. Those places are going to be called principal energy levels. And every principal energy level has a specific number of electrons that it can hold. This chart shows you the energy level and the total number of electrons. So in the first energy level, we can fit a total maximum of two electrons. In the second principal energy level, we can fit eight. In the third, we can fit 18. And in the fourth and the fifth, we can fit 32. You don't really need to worry about how many electrons fit in the sixth and the seventh principal energy levels, but if you want, you can totally look them up if you really need to know. Almost without exception, all the atoms that we're going to deal with when we look at electron configurations are going to occupy the first five principal energy levels. Basic electron configuration is given to us on our periodic table. Using the key, you'll see it's in the bottom left corner of every element entry in the periodic table. For calcium, for instance, it's 2-8-8-2. And using this electron configuration, we can get a lot of information about calcium's electrons. Here are three questions that I could ask you based on calcium's basic electron configuration. Take a moment and see if you can answer each of these questions. And then when you're ready, let's go through them together. So how many electrons are in each of calcium's principal energy levels? The answer is two, and then eight, and then eight, and then two. And so this is always going to be read from left to right. In the first principal energy level, there are two. In the second, there are eight. In the third, there are eight. And in the last, there are two. How many of calcium's principal energy levels are full? The first two. The first principal energy level fits a total of two electrons and it has it in there. And the second principal energy level fits a total of eight and you can see that that is totally occupied. The third and fourth principal energy levels still have more space where more electrons could be placed. And finally, how many valence electrons does calcium have? Calcium has two valence electrons. This is always going to be the rightmost number in any basic electron configuration. For calcium, this number happens to be two. When thinking about basic electron configurations and the periodic table, there are a couple of things that you really should pay attention to. The first we can see here with element number 72, which is hafnium. If you look at hafnium's electron configuration, you see an asterisk. And the reason for that is because we need to go to the bottom of the table to read that the asterisk denotes the presence of 2-8- to start for any element 72 and above. It's simply a matter of running out of room. They just do not have enough room in these boxes to write the full configuration. And every element 72 and above is going to start with 2-8. So they've just denoted that for every element 72 and up, you're going to have 2-8 to start. So don't forget to make that addition whenever you're dealing with the electron configuration of any element that's 72 or hafnium or up from there. Also, if you look at the periodic table, you're going to see that there are going to be some elements that have no electron configuration listed. The bottom line here is basically, they obviously do have an electron configuration, but if it's not listed, you really don't need to worry about it for almost any intent or purpose. I will show you how to use the periodic table to figure out the electron configurations of these elements as we go on through this unit, but for the region's perspective, you really don't need to know them because they're not listed. You may start to notice that there are some patterns that we can see on the periodic table with regard to electrons, particularly with regard to the rows and the columns of the periodic table. 
So elements in the same column of the periodic table, which we're going to call the same group, have the same number of valence electrons. Here are all of the elements from group one, and you can see that each of them have one valence electron. Similarly, elements in the same row, which is called a period of the periodic table, have the same number of principal energy levels. Here are all of the elements from period two. I've scrunched them together, and you can see that they all have two principal energy levels in their electron configuration. These patterns are going to hold true across the periodic table. And if you take a moment and look at it now, I think you'll see that I'm not lying to you. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of basic electron configurations. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can determine an atom's basic electron configuration if you're given the identity of that atom. It's as simple as going to the periodic table. Also make sure that you can use a basic electron configuration to determine the number of electrons in an atom's principal energy levels, in its kernel, and in its valence. And finally, make sure that you can identify valid basic electron configurations. If I were to give you an electron configuration that was 2-9-4, for instance, can you tell me why that configuration is not a valid configuration that we could ever expect to see? If you can do each of those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have here at the end. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.